Green Acres was one of the most popular sitcoms of the 1960s. The show followed high-powered New York lawyer Oliver Wendell Douglas, who dreams of becoming a farmer, and Lisa Douglas, his glamorous Hungarian wife, who is uprooted from an upscale Manhattan penthouse apartment to move to a rundown farm in a rural town named Hooterville. The show was on CBS from 1965 to 1971, and today it can still be seen somewhere on television in reruns. If you were a fan of the show, you might think you know everything about it, but here are some little-known facts about this classic TV show that you may not know. Green Acres was inspired by the 1950 radio show Granby's Green Acres. The eight-episode series was created by Jay Somers. He also wrote, produced, and directed it. The principal characters were a married couple played by B. Benaderet and Gail Gordon and originated on Lucille Ball's radio show, My Favorite Husband. The show's premise was that a big city banker moves his family to a rundown farm, despite having no farming experience. Benaderet would later play Kate Bradley on Petticoat Junction and appeared in several episodes of the Green Acres TV series. Following the popularity of the Beverly Hillbillies and Petticoat Junction, CBS asked producer Paul Henning for another half-hour sitcom to fill a spot on the schedule. His other two shows were so successful that they didn't even ask him for a pilot episode. Faced with running three shows at the same time, Henning persuaded Jay Summers to develop a series for the time slot. Summers then adapted his old radio program, Granby's Green Acres, for television, shortened the title to just Green Acres, and went on to write and produce around one-third of the show's episodes. The first episode of Green Acres is a mockumentary about the Douglas's plan to move to the countryside. The show was anchored by former ABC newscaster John Charles Daly. Daly was hosting the CBS game show What's My Line at the time, and a few weeks after the show debuted, Albert and Gabor returned the favor by appearing as mystery guests on his show where they publicly thanked Daly for helping them to launch their series. Your strength in that show gave it such a wonderful quality that we couldn't have gotten otherwise. No, that's nice of you to say. That's I very true. I just... The show is set in the same fictional universe as Paul Henning's Petticoat Junction, and some characters cross over on both shows. Joe Carson, Fred and Doris Ziffel, Sam Drucker, Newt Kiley, and Floyd Smoot have all appeared on both shows at one time or another. Both shows also have the same hometown called Hooterville, and also share the towns Pixley, Crabwell Corners, and Stankwell Falls. The Beverly Hillbillies, another Paul Henning show, also reference Hooterville in several episodes, and Granny actually comes to Hooterville in the Petticoat Junction episode, Granny the Baby Expert. You Kate Bradley? <laughs> hey! Oh. right about you, Kate. You and Cousin Pearlies look alike. Another connection was B. Benadaren herself, who played both Pearl Bodine on the Beverly Hillbillies and Kate Bradley on Petticoat Junction. Eddie Albert and Ava Gabor sing the main theme song, which was composed by Vic Mizzy, who also wrote the theme for The Addams Family. It was unusual for a television theme song in which the lyrics are performed by the show's stars rather than by anonymous session vocalists, as is the case with many other TV theme songs. Pat Buttram later revealed that his character, Mr. Haney, was inspired by Elvis Presley's manager, Colonel Tom Parker, who he had met a decade before while Parker was working as a carnival barker. Arnold is a lovable pig that the Ziffles treat like a son. He understands English, lives indoors, and gets a lot of attention. Everyone except Oliver seems to understand him when he grunts. He's a huge TV and Western fan, goes to school with his book bag in his mouth, and signs his own name on paper. Only Oliver thinks that Arnold is just livestock. Arnold was the only cast member to win an award for a performance in a sitcom as he won the coveted Patsy Award in 1967, given to the best performance by an animal. Frank Cady played the same character in three different sitcoms at the same time. His character, storekeeper Sam Drucker, is in Petticoat Junction, The Beverly Hillbillies, and Green Acres. Besides being a newspaper editor and printer, Drucker is also a volunteer firefighter, a notary public, a constable, a justice of the peace, and the postmaster. He appeared in 142 episodes of Green Acres, 
152 episodes of Petticoat Junction, and 10 episodes of the Beverly Hillbillies. He continued his role of Sam Drucker in the final season of Green Acres after Petticoat Junction had ended its run in 1970. On the last day of filming, there was a rumor going around that the cast had a luau and Arnold the Pig was eaten. Years later, Tom Lester admitted that he made up the story in an interview for a TV Land special. He said it was because he was tired of people asking him whatever happened to Arnold the Pig. Hank Patterson was in his late 70s when he played the part of Fred Ziffel on the show. He had also been appearing on Petticoat Junction since its premiere, but he gained his greatest popularity on Green Acres as the owner of Arnold the Pig, who he treated like a son. Patterson was almost completely deaf when the show began, but he was so beloved by the cast, producers, and fans that in order to keep him on the show, a dialogue coach would be lying on the floor out of sight and poke him on the leg with a yardstick to prompt him when to say his lines. 1971 was known as CBS's infamous Rural Purge. Green Acres was one of the victims of the purge, along with other shows like The Beverly Hillbillies, Petticoat Junction, which ended in late 1970, Mayberry RFD, and Hee Haw. Demographics showed that these shows only appealed to older viewers and people who lived in rural areas. CBS programming executive Fred Silverman decided to cancel them, even though they were all still hugely popular in the ratings, as they wanted to go after what they felt were more lucrative advertising dollars. According to an inside joke, CBS canceled every show with a tree in it. Ava Gabor's dog gave birth to pups in 1969. When one of them stopped breathing, she put a hose down his throat, resuscitated him, and nursed him back to health. She named the puppy Oliver and his sister Lisa. Mary Grace Canfield was considered a controversial character in the 1960s. In a television era where sex talk was off limits, Mary played Ralph Monroe, a female construction worker with a male first name. She was the better part of a fix-it team with her less competent brother, Alf. In an interview, Mary said that show creator Jay Summers was constantly having fights with network executives over her character. The executives were worried that people wouldn't believe that a woman could be a blue-collar worker. How times have changed. Arnold the Pig was created as one pig actor, yet each season he was played by a different pig. Each pig was even a different color and size. Also, the first pig was a male, but the three others were females. Even so, Arnold was always referred to as a male pig. Eddie Albert was frequently given a fake script by the writers so that his reactions to the outlandish situations and dialogue by the other actors were real. When the other actors spoke their lines, Eddie Albert usually said, What? with a confused look on his face. Of the regular actors on the show, eight of them were over 40 when the show premiered on September 15, 1965. The oldest actor was Hank Patterson, who was a month shy of 77. Eddie Albert was the next oldest at 59. Pat Buttram and Frank Cady were both in their 50s, as was Barbara Pepper. Ava Gabor, Alvy Moore, and Sid Melton were all in their late 40s. Mary Grace Canfield had just turned 41. The only exception was Tom Lester, the youngest cast member, who was eight days away from turning 27. One of the funniest contrasts of the show was that Oliver and Lisa still wore their city clothes even though they now owned the farm and lived in the country. Oliver was never seen without a suit and tie, even while doing his farm chores. It echoes another popular show of the time, The Beverly Hillbillies, where Jed Clampett and the rest of the family wore their hillbilly clothes even though they had moved to their ultra-expensive Beverly Hills mansion. With Tom Lester's passing on April 20th, 2020, there are no more surviving cast members, but we'll always have great memories of this show, and especially the incredible cast. What are some of your favorite memories of the show? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoy our content, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now. And that's how Oliver Wendell Douglas bought a farm. This is John Daly in New York.